Hello, my name is Nico Steves. Welcome to this week's installment of Constant Procession. I'd like to thank you for your listening to these weekly Constant Procession podcasts and also for purchasing plus spreading the word about my book, The Very Fine Life, which is available on Amazon.com. Oh, one other thing. For those of you currently reading my book, please, when you finish it, do go to the book's Amazon.com page and rate it. I have a link at nicosteves.com that will get you to the page on Amazon. I need several dozen additional ratings in order to raise the visibility of the book on Amazon. Just after completing my first book, The Constant Procession, I found myself attending a track and field practice at the parochial high school where my sons attended. As many parents can relate, the first few times you attend these practices and the competitions after school, you find yourself in a strange mashup. Of course, for the record, knowing you're being at the school to support your son or daughter makes it the most important thing to be doing at the time. But nevertheless, this strange mashup is where, on one hand, the pressures of needing to have completed more work before leaving work for the day to get to the school is mashed up with the reality that though you're here at the school field, you're basically just standing around waiting for something to happen on the field. This was the backdrop for my first learning about the Virgin Mary and a monastery that I'd never heard of nor read about, the Most Holy Mother of God Monastery at Monte Virgine, near Naples, Italy. One of the other dads and I were literally hanging onto a fence that outlined the track, waiting for the practice to end. I mentioned working on my book about the history of the Virgin Mary since she passed on from the world, and perhaps as I write this, he may have been the first person that I told about the book. Since I was a bit tentative to reveal the unusual nature of my book's topic, I was unsure how he would react. Well, to my surprise, this other dad became excited and immediately told me the story of his mother and her association with the Virgin Mary when she was a child. As he was the firstborn American of Italian descent, his mother came over from the old country, as we say, well after World War II. When she was about eight or ten years old, World War II was in its full engagement in Italy, and he mentioned it was somewhere during that period between 1940 and 1943 when Naples, where she lived, was a key transit and communications point for the Nazis in supplying their forces in North Africa. And so, Naples was a major target. Naples became the most bombed city in Italy by airstrikes. His mother, along with her family, sought refuge at the monastery on a steep mountain slope, about 40 plus miles out of Naples. His mother would tell him how they would pray and pray to the Virgin Mary to intercede with her son Jesus to protect them from the destruction of the air raids. Well, since I'd never heard of Monte Virgine nor read anything about it and my book completed, I just put a mark on my timeline that I'd been developing during my research a number of years ago. Well, the story up to World War II began for Christians when, according to Miracle Hunter Michael O'Neill's website, MiracleHunter.com, reported that a monk, on his way to the Holy Land, learned from another monk that rather than he continue on to Jerusalem, he should settle at Monte Virgine. Ignoring the suggestion, the monk continued on his way, only to be severely beaten by several thieves. St. William took this setback as a message from God, and it led the monk back to the steep slope where he founded the monastery, and he became known as St. William of Monte Virgine. Initially, he lived there alone for a year, and during that time, the Virgin Mary appeared to St. William and urged him to erect a shrine at the location. Eventually, word of his dedication to God and prayer in solitude brought other brothers and, before long, a following of people from the area. A church was built there in the year 1142. 
an icon of the Virgin Mary, is the centerpiece of what became a Benedictine monastery on the steep mountain slope. Local tradition indicates that the story of its origin began when the face of the Virgin Mary, attributed to being painted by St. Luke the Evangelist, was brought from Palestine to Constantinople by Eudocia, wife of the Byzantine emperor at the time, Theodosius II, which was during the 5th century. And for almost a thousand years of upheaval, this portrait, known as Black Madonna, finally was fitted into a larger icon of the Virgin Mary, pointing the way to Jesus, who sits on her lap, and given to the sanctuary at Montevergine, around the year 1300, where to this day pilgrims gather to pray. The dad who told me his mother's story said she and all the people who prayed at the icon during World War II for the Virgin Mary to intercede with her son for their protection did indeed succeed. His mother believed Jesus kept them safe during all the bombing raids. In another story about World War II and this monastery of Montevergine is that the monastery was entrusted with hiding the famous Shroud of Turin from the Nazis during the war. Only a few ever knew this, but letters at the site found during the post-war mentioned that the caretakers of the shroud hid this relic in a chapel at the monastery rather than at the Vatican or another Italian monastery. This was a good choice because the other monastery that had been considered was totally destroyed by an aerial bombardment. The reason for hiding it was that Hitler expressed great interest in obtaining it for himself. Nazi troopers did eventually come to this monastery and search for it. All the monks went to the chapel to pray as the troopers searched the entire location. However, the captain in charge told his soldiers not to bother the monks in prayer. The monks were praying at the altar, and underneath the altar, the Shroud of Turin had been hidden. And so the Nazis never located the Shroud of Turin. This is Nico Steves. I hope you enjoyed this installment. For a comprehensive list of approved apparitions of the Virgin Mary, go to miraclehunter.com. Please feel free to contact me at nicosteves at gmail.com. That's N-I-K-O-S Steves, S-T-E-V-E-S, at gmail.com. For more books and information about the Madonna, check out spiritdaily.com. My book, The Very Fine Light, can be found using the title, The Very Fine Light, on Amazon.com. If you like this episode, and for more, share them with friends. This is Nico Steves. Thank you. See you next time.